Do you know how to add and subtract scalars? And I would dare say that you do. Do you know how to add and subtract vectors? You might or might not, but I'm going to teach you. Why would we ever bother uh, trying to subtract and add vectors? The answer is, if, you, if you're talking about going to um, Chicago, then you'll be traveling 300 miles to Denver, straight um, east, and then following another road 30 degrees north of east, etc., to find your, and, and then using these subtraction and, and, and addition techniques, you can find your total displacement from the start, starting point to the ending point. Let's define vector addition. How are we going to do it? To add two vectors, place the tail of the second vector at the head of the first. So first of all, let me say what I mean by the second and the first vector. This is a vector equation. The first vector that appears on the right-hand side, meaning as I read this equation from left to right, the first vector that appears on the right-hand side is called the first vector. And then the second, as I'm reading from left to right, is the second one. So that's what I mean by those. The resultant vector is what we get when we add the two vectors together. So um, to do it, we're going to place the tail of the second vector. So which is the second vector? Well, that's b in this case. And we're going to place the tail of b at the head of a. So if this is b, my second displacement, Where's the tail and where's the head of B? Well, here's the head. That's where the arrow head is. Yeah, that's one good way to remember it, the arrow head, when you think about a bow and arrow. And then the tail is where the tail feathers are. And I want to put the tail of B at the head of A. A is the first vector. So I'm, I can move these vectors around in space. So this vector b happens to be at the same length as this pen. This b, this vector b, is... I'm just trying to find a way to say this. The, this is still the vector b. Why? It still has the same magnitude in the same direction. Well, is this b? And you say, no, nope, same magnitude, but different direction. So that's not the same as B. But I can take a copy of B and move it anywhere around in space, and I haven't changed that vector. And so what I want to do when I'm adding vectors together is to take that vector and move it until its tail is at the head of A. Well, luckily, we already did that here. You can see the head of A here, the tail will be there. They're already lined up exactly the way you're supposed to do it. And then we're supposed to draw the resultant vector from the tail of the first vector, namely A. So here's the tail of A. To the head of the second. So here's my resultant vector. It comes from the tail of A to the head of B. And that is my resultant uh, vector R. You say, well, that's kind of dumb because that's a lot of work for nothing because that makes complete sense to me because if A is, is 3 meters and B is 2 meters, then R is going to be 7 meters. And I say, you're absolutely right. And it is easy when A and B are parallel to each other. But when things get a little dicey is when A and B are not parallel to each other. So we're setting up the, the machinery to be able to handle all of these cases. All right, so, and this is exactly what we were talking about just now. When adding two parallel vectors, the magnitude of the resultant vector is the sum of the magnitudes of the two vectors. Here's my vector A, magnitude 5 meters, say. My vector B, magnitude 3 ma meters, say. And we just add up those two magnitudes and we get the magnitude of the resultant vector. No big deal. But, when those two vectors are not parallel to each other, 
then we're not in Kansas anymore. Suppose this is A and this is B. And A and B are 90 degrees from each other. Now what about the resultant vector? Well, um, suppose this is A is 5 and B is 3. The magnitude of A is 5. And the magnitude of B is 3 meters. Can I just add up 5 meters plus 3 meters to get what the resultant is here? And you say, I don't think so. And you would be right. You can't just add up those magnitudes. To find the magnitude of R, you've got to use the Pythagorean theorem. And you know if this side is 5 and this side is 3, um, then R squared is going to be the magnitude of this side squared plus the magnitude of this side squared. And um, this could be 5, this could be 3, whatever the numbers are, and then take the square root at the end. So when adding two non-parallel vectors, the magnitude of the resultant vector is not the sum of the magnitudes of the two vectors. I'd like to just drill that into your head because <laughs> someday, and probably during this class and probably during this next week, you'll make that mistake. I've made that mistake. You'll all make that mistake. But when you do and you can't get the answer to work out right, then you say, oh, see, did I add the magnitudes up? Then I made a mistake. So remember that the magnitude of the resultant vector is not the sum of the magnitudes of the two vectors, except in the very special case of those two vectors being parallel to each other. All right, so for perpendicular vectors, you can use trigonometry to find the magnitude and direction of the resultant vector. So on this one, we just actually go through the algebra, no big deal. Um, this vector A here has a magnitude of 6 meters, and vector B has a magnitude of 2 meters. And um, R is R squared is that squared plus that squared, so R itself will be the square root of that squared plus that squared. Plug the numbers in. Notice that I've got the units here. Um, and that will give you the magnitude of R. But to, know if, uh, to fully know the, the vector R, you've got to have its magnitude, which is just worked out to be 6.3 meters. But you've also, you also need the, the angle, the direction. And that can be uh, written as uh, we can, it can be found by taking the tangent of that angle. Tangent of the angle is opposite over adjacent. And then if you want the angle, you take the inverse tangent of both sides of that equation, like we talked about. Giving theta is the inverse tangent of 2, the opposite, over 6, the adjacent. Plug the numbers in, and you get 18 degrees. And so that gives you the, the direction of that vector r, the resultant vector r. Uh, one more interesting special case, if you have um, a vector, let's say it's 4 meters in this direction, and you want to add it to a vector that's 2 meters in this direction. So that's similar to the case where the two vectors are parallel to each other, where you just add up the magnitudes. What about this one? Well, I've placed the tail of the second vector at the tip or the head of the first vector, and the resultant vector is going to go from where I started to where I ended. So what is the magnitude of that resultant vector? And you might say, well, I think it's just 4 meters minus 2 meters to give me a 2 meter resultant vector. And I'd say, exactly right. That's right. Define the negative of a vector. <clears throat> it's a result of multiplying the vector by a negative 1. We'll talk about that a little bit later. <clears throat> But for now, the negative of a vector is a vector that has the same magnitude but opposite direction. So if this pen is, is a vector, 
then it's negative, it has the same magnitude, the same length, but it points in the opposite direction. So <clears throat> if this woman is, is climbing the stairs going up the stairs to the roof, the ladder, and the, her vector displacement is d, then the negative of that vector displacement is her coming down the stairs, starting at the top and coming to the bottom. So this is what we denote as negative d. It's a vector, if you look at that red arrow, that red arrow has the same length, the same magnitude, but opposite direction to this arrow. And mathematically, typographically, we just put a minus sign here. That means the negative. Um, so this is the same definition as we had before. Um, so if you're exerting a force to push a car, uh, then the negative of that force would be you're pushing in the opposite direction. All right, A and B are both vectors. Vector A is directed due west, and vector B is directed due north. Here's north. Face north. My right-hand side is east. West, south. Okay? And A is directed due west. Vector B is directed due north. Okay. Which of the following choices correctly indicates the directions of vectors minus A and minus B? All right, so I need a minus A. Well, a minus A, the negative of, the a, of a, is a, direction, is a vector of the same magnitude but opposite direction. So minus A looks like this, and B same magnitude as B, but opposite direction. So, minus A is directed due west, not true. And minus A is directed due west, not true. Minus A is directed due east. That's true. So here's minus A. Since A is directed west, minus A has to be directed east. And minus B is directed due south. So that's the one that I want. Um, B can't be directed due north because, I'm sorry, minus B can't be directed due north because B is directed due north and minus B has to be in the opposite direction. Okay? Let's define vector subtraction. To subtract a vector, what we do is to add its negative. You have seen this before <laughs> when you've uh, add, learned how to add scalars, add regular numbers. To talk about subtraction, um, what is 5 minus 3? Well, somewhere in your career, you have said that 5 minus 3 is the same thing as 5 plus a negative 3. That's how we define subtraction. You add the negative to subtract. Same thing here. Here's a plus b. To add a and b, b is the second vector, right? It appears second as I read from left to right. I put its tail at the tip or the head of a and then I draw the resultant vector, which is at C in this case, uh, from where I started to where I ended. Um, what about subtraction? By definition, A minus B is defined as A plus a negative B. I'm going to add the negative vector. But how do we do that with vectors? Well, here's A. This A looks the same as that. Hopefully you can see that. But what's minus B? What's the negative of B? Well, we already know that because negative B is the vector that has the same magnitude as B but opposite direction. So negative B looks like this. And now, if I want to add vector A, 
to vector minus b. This vector minus b becomes the second vector as I read from left to right. And here it is. Where's its head? And where's its um, tail? I'm going to add the tail of this second vector, which is minus b, add that, place that tail of that vector at the tip of the first vector, which is a. Here's the tip of a, here's the tail of minus b, and here's minus b. So now I'm going to add those two vectors. Remember, subtracting is just adding the negative. I took the negative of b, I'm adding it to a, and bingo, I can now draw the resultant vector from the tail of A to the tip or the head of B. So that's the direction of the vector D, which is A minus B. Now I might ask you to compare the sum A plus B, that gives me C, and the difference between these two vectors, which gives me D. Do they look the same to you? Well, I hope not. Certainly C is in a dire different direction from D. Looks like the magnitude of D is going to be less than C as well, which it will be. And um, so that's how you, how you subtract vectors. Really pretty cool. All right, uh, an example. Consider the two vectors represented in the drawing, A and B. Which of the following options is the correct way to subtract graphically vector B from vector A? So I want A minus B. You say, oh, well, I know how to do that. You just add the negative. That's A plus the negative B, just like we did before. And so we're going to need the negative of B. Well. If b is in that direction, what's the direction of negative b? And you say, opposite. And I say, exactly right. So here's minus b. Now I want to add this vector to a. So let, let's let this pen represent the vector minus b. Here's the tail. Here's the head of the vector, I'm sorry, vector minus b. And I want to move this vector around until it's tail is at the head of A. So I'm going to move him around until he's right here. That's where I want minus B to be. And then the resultant vector is going to be from the tail of A up to the head of A, tail of minus B to the head of minus B. So it's going to look like this. A plus a negative b, which is equal to a minus b. So that's how you do that one. Let's see if any of these diagrams um, look right for doing this. All the a's look fine. We're going to look for a vector that goes in this direction. That's not right, because I, I need a vector that goes to the right. This one's not right because it's still, it, this still looks like the vector b. These guys here, both of those look identical to this vector b. We haven't reversed it and we need to reverse it. Well, this looks good. This, um, both of these look like minus b because they're to the right instead of to the left for b. So both those vectors look right. But in order to add two vectors, remember I'm adding the negative, I have to put the tail of the second at the tip of the first. So this, these two tails are together. You can't add vectors that way. This one is correct. And because I've got the tail of the second vector at the tip or the head of the first vector. And then the resultant vector, A, minus b looks like that. 
Which one of the following statements is true concerning scalar quantities? Uh, is this true? They have magnitude and direction? No, nope. scalars don't have direction. Uh, scalar quantities must be represented by base units. Not true, you can represent them with other units. Scalar quantities can be added to vector quantities using rules of trigonometry. So can you do A plus B? That's a vector A, because it has an arrow over the top. This is a magnitude of a vector B. This is an incorrect relationship. It's like adding something in miles to something in kilometers. It's even worse than that, because this only has a magnitude. This has a magnitude, this vector has a magnitude and a direction. So you can't do that. Illegal. Uh, scalar quantities can be added to other scalar quantities using rules of ordinary addition. That's certainly true. And scalar quantities can be added to other scalar quantities using rules of trigonometry. Um, not really, because scalar quantities, there's no direction to worry about, and so trigonometry isn't needed. So it's just plain old ordinary addition adding uh, two numbers together. Which of the following quantities is a vector qu uh, quantity? The age of the pyramids, so that'd be in years. Well, the pyramids are getting older and older, but we're not talking about how the age is changing. We're just talking about what the age is now. It might be 500,000 uh, years old. I don't know what it is, but that is not a vector. The age is not a vector. It's a scalar. It's just represented by a single number. Yeah, the, the, it's 5,000 years old now, but next year it'll be 5,001. Still, all you need is a, is a single number. Mass of a watermelon, that's a scalar, measured in kilograms. It doesn't have a direction. Mass doesn't have a direction. You say, well, gravity pulls it down, and that, that means that mass, but mass doesn't have a direction. The force, the weight, will have a direction, and we'll talk about that. Mass is independent direction. Sun's pulling the Earth. This does have a direction, because if we have a sun and the Earth, the pull of the sun on the Earth is called um, the force of gravity. You figured that out, I'm sure. It has both a magnitude and a direction. It's a certain direction it, that it pulls it toward the sun. So that's definitely a vector. Uh, number of people on board an airplane? No, that's just a scalar. Temperature of molten lava, also a scalar.